the three main types of methodology for evaluation are travel cost, contingent valuation, and choice experiments. So hopefully by the end of the day, you'll have a pretty good idea about how you might undertake one of these surveys. So it's kind of going to be very practical, hands-on, about how you might undertake these. So the first one is travel cost. So travel cost is a revealed preference technique. And so what you're doing is trying to work out the value of usually a recreation site, and it's revealed by observing actual behavior. So one of the nice things about the travel cost method is it's based on people's actual real behavior. So people are traveling to Grand Canyon, they're traveling to Yale Forest, whatever natural resource that you're looking at. So a nice thing compared to this, uh, compared to the state of preference techniques, is real behavior. State of preference techniques, we ask people hypothetical questions about how they value it, which can be an issue. It came back to 1947 when a guy called Harold Hotelling, who was a national park warden, uh, and his boss asked him, why should I give you more money for investing in this natural park? And he had to try and justify it. So he wrote a letter to his boss and saying, well, people are traveling all around America, all around the world to come to this site. I can't remember what site it was. But if they are willing to spend that money coming here, surely that has something to do with demonstrating that it must be important to them. The kind of state of the art in travel cost is what's called the random utility uh, travel cost. And I'll say a little bit more about random utility theory when I talk about choice experiments. But what it basically means is that you have a choice about which site you go to. So if you're thinking about forests, maybe around Yale there's five different forests within an hour's drive. So you, as someone who's going to go walking in a forest, you choose which forest you prefer. So your choice will depend on the attributes of that forest. You have a choice about which site you go to. So if you're thinking about forests, maybe around Yale there's five different forests within an hour's drive. So you, as someone who's going to go walking in a forest, you choose which forest you prefer. So your choice will depend on the attributes of that forest. So if you're going mountain biking, it might be different forests with mountain bike trails where others don't have. Uh, if you're going walking, it might be ones which have got more nature there to look at. Or, and the forest will be different distances to you. So what the random utility model does is look at the suite of alternatives and substitute sites, looks at the attributes of those sites, and tries and works out why do you travel to that particular site? What's, what's the benefits? What's the environmental quality of that site to, to make you choose to go there? So what you're analyzing is people's choice of forest to try and then ascertain the value of that forest and different components of it.